Michael Jordan here with AB Friendly Company and you're at the Underground Meadery. This is segment three of just some general equipment that you should probably start packing into your kitchen, your garage, down in the basement where you're hiding out. This is just some general stuff now that we've went over what you're going to ferment in and that you need to start getting your yeast. Now that you've got something to make your meat in and the yeast to start adding to it, we need to start getting the equipment so we can get all the product in it. So I'm going to show you some things right now that we use that, that help you start putting your adjuncts in, start blending down your spices and stuff like that. You should get yourself a couple different funnels, different range of gauge, so you can drunk fruits and stuff in it from pie fillings to if you're just slapping in some spices. If you're going to be adding some waters or some blends of juices, you should get yourself a funnel, get a couple different ones. It's a, it's a good thing to have a few in case you're doing a couple different things. You're not using the same funnel for everything. So get a couple different funnels. When it comes to measuring devices, I would get a couple different cup measurements. So that way you can pre-mix them, fill them, set them across. That way you can dump them in as you go in your funnel. Uh, we use a, a super spoon. It's able to get different measurements as we go. Right there is two and a half tablespoons, right all the way to four tablespoons. We can go all the way down here to one tablespoon. This is so we can add our spices when you're using mace, vanilla, extracts. That way you're getting a good precise measurement for your recipes. That's pretty important when you're going to be replicating these. So I get a couple different measuring devices, uh, a couple different teaspoons, get yourself a couple different funnels uh, that makes a big difference when you're working through things. When you're going to be adding spices or if you're doing braggots or brochets, right, you're going to get yourself a couple different bags. These are called hops bags or grain bags. This is so you can stick your wood in there for wood aging. Your hops, if you're making a hops mead, you can put your grains in it to boil to do braggots. You're able to put your spices through it. Now if you're adding spices directly, right, you can always use one of these in the bigger fermentators. You just stick all your spices in this, snap that down, and you can just drop this in like a bomb. And so those bigger ones, stirring it around every once in a while, letting the spices mix through. And you can also use this to pour your mixes out and funnel things out of. So that's something else you should think of. This is just a coffee filter, right? So it has a micro screen. It works really good. The other thing is a screen, right, that you can put over your buckets when you're dumping things in or dumping your adjuncts out. That way you can screen off things as you go. If you're floating hops, if you're going to ahead and put your oranges and apples, blueberries, that way that you can screen it off and then you can run it through another filtering unit. A lot of our filtering and ciphering units are just a little pox tube and it's just a little cartridge. You'll see it when we get into the siphoning and bottling. It's on the end of a tube and we just stick it down in there and it helps also if you stick it inside one of these and you start sucking it off. Clarity for competition is huge. Now as a mead maker, me I don't mind if it has little floats and stuff in it of some of the fruits, some of the hops, some of the spices. I think it builds a lot more flavor in your meads, but you have to remember when you leave that stuff in there, sometimes it can keep fermentation activating. And when you go to competitions, they always like to see clarity, that they want, they want it super crystal clear. So when you're, when you're doing stuff and you're mixing all of that down, this is for a bigger batch, right? When you're mixing, uh, they call them magic sticks. You can use wood ones. If you're using the same wood stick for each batch, you're gonna get some back flavoring. It's the magic totem. Uh, some people really like the wood. Uh, we like the plastic, easy to wash, dishwasher safe. And when we're doing the smaller batches, you don't need a lot of the mixing equipment due to the fact you're gonna be shaking the jug like a paint mixer. And that kind of stirs and adjuncts everything in together. That dissolves the honey good. So we're just using uh, the paint mixing method of, of the fat man shaking. So, but if you're gonna stir, get yourself a couple different stirring rods some big spoons, something that you can get in there and mix in. Uh, this is a bricks meter, 
right? This is actually a portable refractometer meter. Uh, when we're looking to see what the alcohol content is, this is a good way to measure it. You can just take a little bit of your mead, drop it on there, and it's going to give you the different measures of sugar and starch inside the measurement. It can give you a potential for your alcohol reading. Now, uh, this is not a ex very expensive unit. It needs to be calibrated, it needs to be clean, but it's a pretty precise unit when using it. Most of the time, we use hydrometers. Uh, this is a distiller's hydrometer set. It comes with uh, the candy thermometer in there. You need to get a candy thermometer. You want to make sure your temperatures when you're making braggots, brochets, getting ready to dump your yeast. Your yeast should always be dumped between 68 and 77 degrees for yeast activation. So it's good to have a thermometer. Uh, these are a couple of different hydrometers for distilling so I can get uh, I can get really down to the measurement of what I'm looking for hydrometer reading. You're going to see us use them. The most common hydrometer is that people use is this one. This is a brewer's hydrometer. Uh, I recommend it. Get a hydrometer. It's going to get your potential alcohol readings. It's going to show how much sugar has been eating. This is going to be a valuable tool. So you should get a hydrometer. You should get a thermometer. Some measuring equipment. The uh, other thing is that you're going to need different things for airlock units. This is an airlock unit. Uh, you fill it up with liquid here. As the CO2 discharges, it bubbles. It allows ingredients not to go back in, but leaves the pressure off the bottle. Uh, same with this. This is a bubbling airlock unit. It has a little piston on the inside that when it starts bubbling, it'll piston and let off and release the gas so you don't have explosion. Both of these work good as airlocks, but when you use these type of airlocks, you're going to lose some of the aroma because it's going to burst out. My guy right here, Simple Balloon. The punching balloons that you can get from the dollar store, I feel are probably the best because they expand bigger, they work better. But a balloon works great when they get so big they can just pop off. You can just put another balloon on it. They might blow up. But uh, this relieves a lot of pressure and it can keep up a lot of the aromas and aromatics in your meads. So as you're working, you can really smell what they're going to smell when they pop open a bottle. So I, I like these quite a bit. Now when you're going to start heating up your honeys and using your honeys in that type of measure, um, you can get yourself big crock pots. We have big ones. I have a 35 gallon crock that we use to boil grains in and different things in when we're doing bigger batches. But uh, my go-to things are the coffee pot method. And I have two coffee pots. I, I have a small three cup one and that's for my water heating. And then I have a large 12 cup one that we use for juices. I only use juices in the big one because it's easier to clean and I'm able to heat up the liquids for the juice by just setting it on the hot plate some of the times. Sometimes we just even put the, I have another coffee pot that we just use a hot plate to do wax. When we dip the bottles with the corks in it, we wax the tops. So I have a coffee pot that we usually heat up the water. And the reason I like coffee pot method of heating my waters and juices is that it gets it warm enough to dissolve honeys and dissolve ingredients, but it's not too hot to where it's going to destroy any of the enzymes or any of the products in it. The other thing here is we have a scale. Uh, it's a digital scale and this helps me measure out my honey that I'm going to be using so that way I always know how much honey is going in each one of my jars. The stuff that I'm showing you here is going to help you brew. Hydrometers get your alcohol content. Funnels, strainers, and measurements are going to help you add your adjuncts and the same amount every time so you're just not throwing stuff in, all this is kind of how we did it before. When you get a great recipe, you want to make sure it's the same all the time. So you want your heat the same every time. You want the measurements the same every time. You want the same amount of honey by weighing it every time. That way it's always the same. And when it comes to that, index cards. This is going to be your recipe book. 
Get yourself a pack of index cars and a Sharpie, and you want to get yourself some clear packing tape. Now what all this is for is when we get going, we're going to write down the recipe on here of what we used, how much of it we used, the temperatures of everything that we used, the starting gravities. It's going to be your recipe. And when you get it all written down on this, you're going to use the clear packing tape and you can slap it right on the side of the jar and tape it on. And that way you can always look at what dates you started it, the time of day, the honeys that you've used, the adjuncts. And when you're done, you can just peel this off and stick this in your recipe index. Uh, a folder, a little card carrier. This will be your recipe book. And then you can even, we're going to show you how to put a star system on it. If it was three star, that this is something that I think everybody would like. A five star, that I think when it clears, it's a competition winner. A one star, that basically I made this mead. And I'm probably only going to share it with me and my dog Axel. Right, that I probably won't make it again. So this is something that you should get yourself some index cards. So the first segment you saw what you're going to ferment in. The second segment was to get you some yeast going. And this one is basically some extra equipment that you're going to need so you can start brewing. Remember to look for the 52 meads in a year from the book to use with these videos.